And as far as we can see with this portion, that wasn't done. So we're going to go for procedural irregularity yeah. and have the caution expunged. Okay. But we're a long way, and that's a long-winded process. But apart from that, be lucky. Yeah. Thank right. you very much, Paul. We've got We've got a ghost somewhere. Yeah. Who's your one? I've been summoned. There's lots of people here, look, lined up, look, look at this. Look, lots of people. So this, what's my happening, Mick? My work happening? is done. Oh, no, come, you got to come with us. So we're following, it's Lenny the pen, look. It's almost the tank. Lots of people. It's the footballs in here. Oh, she did. Oh, damn. <laughs> Is she going to light the cake? Can I light the candles? Oh, she? Okay. We go out with the <laughs> So, Lynn, how you been, mate? I'm doing very well, thank you. I've joined the monastery. I can see that you're Monk Lenny. Monk Brother Lenny. Lenny. Yeah. Brother Lynn. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Brother Lenny. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. Brotherly love. Out of the people. Exactly. Bless you, my son. Oh, exactly, exactly, there we go. But, but, but I would so, like him, I would like him to it's all happening in there. But. I would like him to stay up. Who? Who? Alice. Would you? Yeah, they're running up. Yeah. Merlin's got a knife. One candle. So where? I'm going to kill him. Here we go. So come here, let's have a look. He is upset me today. Where's Mark? There we are. Mark, everybody. Where is Lenny? Lenny's behind her. Where is Lenny? So look, so say what's Lenny, happening. Can Myrna. somebody, it's a, it's a Sean's 50th birthday party. He really upset me this morning, this a, so what, he's going to get you, is, this for, is, 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 is this from Iceland, this cake? Yes. Is this from Iceland? Oh, baby, hurry up. <laughs> hurry up. Is it? Is, anywhere. anywhere. Just is park there. Right. So where did you get this cake? Iceland? Sorry. Iceland. This cake is, I have baked this. I wouldn't buy this in Iceland. I have baked this myself. Stop moving. Just stay still. Okay. What should, we, what should we do with that knife, though? Be careful yeah. with that knife. Baby, but can you? The plate looks a bit dirty, man. <laughs> oh. That's good doing that by punch. Yeah, yeah bosh. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, darling. She nearly knifed me. She nearly knifed me. Yes, yes, yes. Are we going to wait first? Don't stab me with the knife. So here we go. See, it's a motley crew here. Look at this. Look. Darling, I look like a, like a baby. Can you hold the knife? Yeah. Yeah. You can hold the knife. What, what, what same person Can would you give Lenny a knife from? Really? Oh my god. The light has gone out. That's actually his name, really. We're hiding it. Come on. We're going to hide it. We're going to hide it, right? Light it by the door. Get to the door. Just get to the door. The only way is up. Just get to the door. Baby. Just get to the door. Just light it. Why did you just light it? Shall we light up the whole petrol station? Can you help me? Darling. Lenny, the whole charade wouldn't be here. Yeah. 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 Allow me. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, Now, can you, please, can you? Yes. Oh, 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 Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Sean! Happy birthday to you! Yeah. 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 He's not speech, but he, I know he does it. He, 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 Come on, give us a speech! Speech, no, I'm, speech! I'm, speech. <laughs> Come on, Sean. Come on, are you speechless? I'm undeserved. Break out the fault. I thought you was going to say that. I'm in the morning, yeah, Luke, Paul Harris, I've got Davis, you've got Manor, of course, you've got Parker Cabin. Taxi League's Jim Thomas, of course. Lenny the Penny. Lenny's got a knife. He's got the microphone. He's got the drum slayer. Lenny the Bridge, of course. 
Steve Garlic is on his way. Steve Garlic is on his way. Happy birthday, Mr. Presenter. And I would just like to say, you put Marilyn Marilyn Monroe in, won't you? Yes. Look at that. I mean, God bless her. God Darling, bless her. Make, oh, a oh, make a wish. Make a wish. Make a wish. I know what I'm wishing for. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, oh, get a plate out. I can read mine and then I stopped at the yeah. old leopard skin phone there. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought, I'm not going nowhere. I'm on a, one size too small leopard skin phone. I'll have you know. Uh, I'm undeserving, really. This. But I'll, I will have you know that it's not 50. I'm 49. So there you go. Right? No, no, like. Yeah, I'm 49. It's been 49 for years. <laughs> this is uh, a fantastic, fantastic yeah. time. Yeah. Of all you people here, this is I, I am. Words fail me. Words fail me. Oh, Steve! Uh, and that yeah, don't happen stuff. often. Oh, sure. That I'm really don't happen. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, Steve, no, no, I've really. got you a cake. Sorry, <laughs> so, uh, uh, Steve, come here. Have a chat. Say, <laughs> say a few words. Don't sit on the cake, Steve. 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 What we've got here is uh, no, no. the first full adaptation. Well, he's uh, given an interview, but he's never come on. Oh, he's been on, on the breakfast show. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. he phoned into the breakfast show, didn't he? Yeah. 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 Oh, darling. I don't know. Happy to see you. Happy to see you. Oh, that's very easy. I'm very oh, late. Oh, oh, hang on a second. Oh, sorry. Hang on a second. <laughs> hang on. Hang on, folks. We can't have, can't have the noise. We can't have the noise. So, uh, Steve. Yeah. You've uh, uh, come to the forefront recently, haven't you? I have. I think it's your periscope. Fantastic um, stuff. Fantastic well, stuff. But uh, what's happening with you? What's the, what, asking Sam question, what's the feel on the streets out there? Well, I mean, there's, a, there's, I don't even know where to begin. There's multiple issues, not just with London, but elsewhere. I, I took a call today from a driver um, who taken a journey to Milton Keynes. He's an E7 taxi driver had his door kicked off and was assaulted, waited 30 minutes for the police to show up. Uh, police, he's actually got the details of who the perpetrators are, the police still aren't prosecuting. And this is a, a common story around the country. They don't want to know about taxi drivers. They don't want to know, they don't want to know, they don't, want, they don't care if you're bilked, it's civil, they don't care if you're, you're not making an income. And frankly, when it comes down to this question of Uber deciding they'll divvy up the country yeah. and make their own rules around what licensing and planning is and everything else, it's an absolute mockery. Nobody is standing up over this. No. I've written now to the mayor on this. I've written to the DFT on this. Because as far as I'm concerned, it cannot continue yeah. that you have a company deciding the rules and regulations for the rest of the country. Well, that's right. And I, I think with these um, the license increases, I know you're JR in it, Steve, yeah? Yeah, we've got, well, that well, that's the license increases are LPHCA. Right. However, um, frankly, the, um, the license increases that we're seeing... Um, potentially we'll see the smallest operators forced out while the large operators can afford to to charge what they want at car launch. I think, to be honest, at the club we feel that them increasing the, the operator fees, it's almost like saying to Uber, you've got to pay 2.9 million, but for that you have London. You get the keys to the kingdom. That's what you get. It's good. If you want to be the only supplier in London, it's going to cost you nearly 3 million to do it. And that's what it is. And, it's exactly and, and, what it and, is. and it's absolutely wrong. But then, you know, there's all sorts of other issues. Um, we've had, uh, I've just been at a GMB meeting tonight and we've had TfL there. I brought up this question, uh, which was left open from the Mayor's report that came out last week about the door being left open for taxis to be charged, congestion charge. Um, you know, investing 60 odd grand in a new electric vehicle and then suddenly a bit further down they go, like, oh, you know what, mate? We're going to charge you congestion because, frankly, we need to get our money in from somewhere else. On the back of that as well, Steve, I, I think we've got to be very careful when uh, taxi drivers are going, oh, private eye should have congestion charge, because I think that makes private eye very valuable to TfL and taxi drivers just being a net plus. I don't think it's doing us any favours, but also it's one step away from taxi drivers. You wish it on them, you're bringing it on yourself, I think. I think we've got to think very carefully about private eye. Well, that's skin. Yes, TfL are absolutely bankrupt, and I just think they're going to look at charging anyone anything they can, to be honest, because they're, they're, they're going skin. That's right. And the irony is, we're putting it in the badge, is when you look how much TfL aided and abetted Uber, 
And they, they, they don't make no money, Uber, do they? They're yeah. losing money. Yeah, hand See hand a fella bankrupt now because it's cheaper to get an Uber than a bus. That's right. So they've, they've tried to screw us, yeah. and they've ended up screwing themselves. Oh, it's have. ironic, isn't it? They have. Yeah, but you've got a, a bigger problem also, because when you actually look at this shared ride business that's coming yeah. up, and uh, and suddenly the... the uh, the uh, you know, what I call them the taxi operators who aren't even licensed to suddenly on the bandwagon over this. Forget the fact they're charging these blooming ridiculous fixed price fares. When I last looked, there was a meter inside a taxi, and you see them charging these ridiculous fixed price fares. And then the next thing is like, you know what? You're becoming a bus. I sat in a meeting. This is yeah. no word of lie with SIPO or the people undertaking this um, this a a engagement for TFL. And the guy said, oh, yeah, there's this wonderful thing in San Francisco. There's no word of a lie. He said, there's this wonderful thing in San Francisco. You don't actually do like Uber Paul where they stop left, right and centre. People meet you along the route. And I said, yeah, that's called a bus stop. Yeah. I, oh, no. I seriously cannot believe this bloke had bought, bought in to the whole thing. And what added to that was the fact that Steve Wright from LPHCA said, you know, here's the thing. You're bigging up a company that's had its licence revoked. I know, it's that's scandalous. Right. That's and, right. and, and that's scandalous. the truth of it. And again, a company where you see, you know, Kosowski saying, what did he say yesterday? Oh, you know what, uh, Kosowski is saying, oh, you know what, um, MIT, the largest, um, or one of the mm. biggest, best-known academic institutes, 88 Nobel laureates from MIT, 88. And he's saying, you know what, they haven't got this right. They, they, they've absolutely got this wrong over three dollars odd for what a driver's earning. And that tells you everything. He's already bought into what they are. Looking at the pooling issue, do you think it can actually work? Because you've got, uh, I mean, you're, uh, with the private hire industry, industry, do you think that, because you've got British people, they all stiff up a lit. They don't want to share a cab with a stranger, do they? Especially cab drivers, no. cab users. That's right. And you've got, uh, you've got different cultures. For. Different cultures are uneasy, well, it's perhaps, not, well, it's a, a Here's the thing. Um, first and foremost, when it first started, people were calling it Uber Paul, but P-U-L-L, because people were thinking it's a chance <laughs> to meet up with... Uh, another yeah, person yeah, in a vehicle. I've said it up myself. Yeah, so then, so then you've got a situation you get a, a Millwall fan gets in and there's a Chelsea fan inside that vehicle. I'd so love, I'll pay to see that. Uh, and, and then you've got the driver expecting to not only uh, be the, uh, the arbiter of whatever happens in that vehicle and try and protect each other, but he's basically, or she's basically in a position where, frankly, they're going to more well, likely no, to be that one. Then, then they're also paying an extra percentage to actually do a pool journey, which actually costs the driver more overall than a normal journey. But as we know, they've all bought they into make, this since with Korski and everything, the Silicon Valley, Uber, Uber Paul, free, tra you know, transportation, urban development. TfL think they're so trendy and cool, jumping in on the back of it. And, and what's Uber done, really, is destroy the two-tier system that we've had in London since the 60s, sure, really. Well, you could only look at what um, you know, Leon Daniels said when he was basically trying to come up with new great ideas to help Uber along with their business yeah. model. Frankly, he's there to act as a licensing op op operation. They're there to license and protect the public, not there to come up with business ideas. It's not their job. I mean, we've got some stuff in the bags this month, and we've regurgitated the, the speech that Leon Daniels gave to the uh, Surface Transport Panel in 2014. And he's saying things like, no, uh, we're happy that uh, when you book a job on Uber, it goes to the operator who sends it to Silic uh, San Francisco on the server, then it goes to the passenger. All stuff like that. That has all been debunked now by Uber admitting that they lied, yeah? He said that they had a landline, and we all That's know right. that the landline he gave out was Joe Bertram's. Yeah. So yeah. you had a guy who had one of the most powerful positions in TfL, certainly over our industry, and he has now been caught bang to rights lying. But where does that leave us? And this is my worry with the Uber licensing, right? Uber's been put on the naughty step by TfL. Not revoked, but on the naughty step. So if they come back in a few months' time and say, yeah, okay, um, yeah, we're going to do that. I read in the paper the other week in the Times a big startling uh, disruptive tech <laughs> announcement that Uber's going to get a landline. Well, that's funny because Leon Daniels said that they did have a landline. I mean, this guy's lied to the GLA, he's lied to the TFL, he's lied to the cab trade, he's lied to the private hire industry. How can this man 
get away with that? Well, I think how can he get away with lying and destroying the two tier system in London? Surely he's culpable. There must be legal change, uh, challenges that can be brought against him as a person now. I, I don't think, unfortunately, there are. There's this, this mere culpa situation. What, what I would say is what, what really makes all of this unusual to me is that we were asking for a, a landline when we put in our original consultation response. And then they were looking for ways out of it. And regardless of that, that didn't happen. We were asking for protection for drivers, a landline for drivers, because frankly, you know as well as I do, whether you're a private hire or a taxi, you are open to assault and bilking. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Verbal assault, physical assault. Nobody gets out of bed, uh, goes to work with the expectation of that. They expect to get back to their family and have a quality of life. But that's how a regulator should be thinking. Well, that's that's right. <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? mean. That's yeah, but you know what? That's why we've got to do the job for them. As far as I'm concerned, I don't mind sticking my head above the parapet daily for whatever sort I get, because I know that full well, when you're working in one of the most soul-destroying, most it, it, there's complete solitude when you're driving. Yeah, you can tweet. Yeah, you've got Facebook. Yeah, you can chat to chat with friends on the phone, or you can do dinner if you're a fine establishment like we are at tonight. But the reality of the matter is when you're on your own, you're on your own. And people say, you know, I've just had a, I've just done a, a, the radio just a short while before I got in LBC. And the guy said, well, you, you don't have to do that job. As if you can suddenly just toss away whatever you've yeah, done. Exactly. He says, you know what? Oh, yeah, I'll go and just get that job at Goldman Smack Sachs to buy instead because uh, they'll right. take me on with all I've got. The, the presumption that, uh, oh, you know, employment's gone down. No, it hasn't. They've massaged the figures with the gig economy jobs that they've suddenly given to everyone and suddenly they're not signing on. The reality is these people are living hand to mouth. Well, it's like last week, Sadiq Khan come out in the tweet and talking about Deliveroo, saying what a great company they were. Deliveroo, they're, they're going to stop putting their food in plastics or the food that they pick up in plastic. You've got the Mayor of London talking about a company who's had to be taken to court by its employees for human rights and workers' rights. Don't pay any tax, paying them £6 an hour. Is this really the company that Sadiq Khan should be, uh, you know, championing from the rooftops on personal tweets? Sadiq, I don't think so, my friend, yeah? Well, isn't it good? We've got Steve Gowlett from the GMB, or Grant Davis from the LCDC, in the studio today on London Taxi Radio. So we're going to have to wind it up, folks, you know that. But who are we winding up tonight, then? <laughs> is it you? Is it me? Is it Have you got his own number? No, 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 no. He, he, he couldn't make it from that other organisation. <laughs> Could be any one of us, couldn't it? So, let, let, what, can you ask? Can we ask the gentleman here a question in terms of? So yes, we're going on the mic. Go on the mic. Uh, uh, All right. I'll just. Uh, well, I'll ask Grant, and then of, of, of course to Steve. How do you see this year panning out? I think. Um, how do I see? It? Personally. I think, right, I think it's going to be a good year. I, I think um, Sean's turned 50. 49. 49 <laughs> and 11 <laughs> months and 30 days, which is a good thing. I, I think we could all be pleasantly surprised. I think, you know what's going to really hurt Uber is TfL because they're skint. They want money. Yeah. Um, I I know a lot of doom mongers out there say that Uber's going to get re-licensed and it's going to be Armageddon. You know what, something inside me thinks that, um, I picked a guy up, he was uh, in the House of Lords and he said up in the uh, top echelons, what TfL are really worried about and all the investors is they've spent all these billions of pounds on Crossrail, people aren't going to use it, they're going to get Uber, Uber Paul and they're going to be left uh, holding the baby, the biggest white elephant in London. Yeah. So they want their revenue. And now they know that they're not getting the revenue because of uh, Uber. Mm. So uh, I might be pleasantly surprised. I might be wrong. If, if I knew what I was talking about all the time, I'd uh, go down the betting office tomorrow. But Steve, uh, how, is this, uh, how is this new uh, kind of charge now affecting the smaller companies out there? The leg what we would consider the legitimate prior part. How does Steve uh, see this year? Private hire, yeah. yeah. I'll answer both. So this, this uh, charge is obviously going to really hurt the smaller 10 to 20 operators. The licence fees. The licence fee, yeah. So the licence fee will hit them. Turning to this year, let's first and foremost talk about Judge Abuffnot, okay? Obviously I've got um, the experience of Judge Abuffnot when she made the decision 
um, to, to allow us into to, to the case. But I'm lucky enough to have had experience of Judge Abuffnot with one of our GMB taxi driver members. Now obviously I can't mention their name, but I've got to tell you, she went out of her way to help our member. Right. I'll tell you that now. Right. And I think she's the most phenomenal judge. There's a reason she's the senior judge. There's a reason when Reading um, had their case and they uh, and uh, Uber's uh, QC decided he'd be a bit cute and try and get the case in for the drivers directly after the Uber hearing, she said, no, you know what, I'll hear it before. She wasn't Perfect. born that yesterday. Is great, yeah. She was not born yesterday. No. How do I see the year going? We've got a DFT report that GMB is heavily involved in. Not totally happy with everything that's happening there. Yes, I am um, aware to certain snippets, let's put it like that. Um, a lot needs to be firmed up. Um, we're, we're looking at the whole ply thing, and we've got some strong ideas on that front. There is something that I, I, I had hoped tonight I would be able to tell you really, really was very, something special happening, um, but we're not quite there yet. Um, all I can tell you is... Uh, uh, we're having major discussions with Lee Day lawyers at the right. moment Good. and all, all I can say is that we'll all keep the fight going regardless of, of the orgs um, what I would say is trying to attack organisations or individuals regardless of the organisation is, is not the right thing to do you may not like what one person stands for you may not like what another person stands for but they're doing their best and when you put your head above the parapet, it doesn't matter who you are, you're trying your hardest. That's right. The, the trolls validate us, though, uh, Steve. You know, they validate. The more trolls you have, the more validated you are. That's how I see it. <laughs> but also, what I'd like to say as well, are you finished, Steve? I just, uh... No, I'm Polish. No, I've got it. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Boom, boom! Oh, hey, hey, that's hey, the drum now. Where's the drum sir? <laughs> but I, I just like, uh, funny enough, before I went to work tonight, I was in the office today, just quickly. And we was talking about uh, Get uh, and the way that they offer the Porsche private hire on, oh, yeah. on the app. Yeah, shocking. Oh. And and the way that we was having a discussion in the in the office tonight, and it was on these lines. Do you remember when Halo brought oh. the private hire onto oh. their oh. app? Yeah. Right? There was murder. Not, there was not far from here. Yeah, uh, I can thought, yeah. I can spit the office, yeah, right? Yeah. But you had Phalo, you had drivers no, who was like upset enough to form something like a voice. We got get now offering private hire on the app, on the where you us. can open the app and see private hire. In you know what we say is applying for hire on the app, the same as taxis, right? Yeah. But drivers seem to be quite happy with that situation. Is the cab trade gone so demoralised now that know. drivers are just accept anything? Because if you stand for nothing, you'll stand for everything. It becomes get stuffed or get lost. That's exactly. Right. They caught the drivers, though, didn't they? They, they exploited yeah. that situation horrendously. Uh, they did. Uh, they did exploit it. Uh, yeah. They exploited it, and there. But you've got you've got you've got uh, por the advertising Porsche, and they're putting a taxi right next to it, and the Porsche is cheaper <laughs> than the taxi. And it's basically like saying they're not good value for money. Taxi. Basically, that's if you can get yeah. a Porsche for that price. Then you should really be able to get a taxi. Effectively, that's what it, it's subconsciously saying, isn't it? Well, I've got a second problem over this, and my, my second problem is, in terms of the fact that this has not this company theoretically as get is not an operator. It's not a licensed private hire operator. They said it's booked ah. through one transport. Well, exactly. So they're using one transport. Yeah. Well, hang right. on. What is it today? Is it yeah. get or is it yeah. one transport? Oh, well, you can't have it both can't ways. They, yeah. And frankly. This is let's play the game however we like, and exactly. you can't do that. Right. Fess up and say, you know what, we're an operator, we'll take a license. Yeah, if yeah. you want to charge tuppence and take me for a Heathrow Airport, less and less, like you've got with Addison Lee charging and then killing the drivers into the per, per, process financially yeah. and yeah. leaving depression, yeah. people losing their homes, yeah. people can't even afford a blooming taxi or private hire vehicle to actually pay, yeah. then frankly, there's something bloody wrong. I mean, and that's the big I thing that we've probably. said in the bads right. as well, is like when it comes to um, like apps and stuff, like Get and stuff, because the club is uh, democratic, we can't say to you as a member, you, you can't use it because everyone's an individual, everyone's got their own financial responsibilities. At the AGM, we voted not to uh, advertise right. Get in the badge. Uh, and secondly, the big point of that was that they're going to be fitting 50 taxis with uh, high-definition, high-tech mapping equipment. So 
get taxi drivers, 50 of them, can sell that on. will now be able to map London, right? And get have said that they're doing this so they can sell that information to autonomous vehicle companies, right? Now, that could be Uber. And so Uber could come into London and say, we're going to be offering autonomous taxis. They're all going to be black, right? But guess what? They've done the knowledge. So the years that you spent on a bike doing the knowledge, you're giving get that for nothing. Or they're going to give you a score a week. And there'll be cab drivers out there who rip their arm off for a score a week, yeah? But what I'm saying is, we are giving the knowledge that you went on your bike to and sweated over and gained and got your badge. You are giving get all that information to sell to any autonomous company who wants to bring a fleet of autonomous taxis into London with the world famous knowledge and you know what there's not many industries that keeps you know shooting themselves in the foot but we seem to be at it all the time that's right Grant Grant we're going to have to end it there I'm afraid folks uh, but that's something we can come back to because it is a, a major it's a really big issue isn't it but we're going to have to leave it there Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sean. Happy birthday to you. And many more. Woo! Happy birthday, Rick. Thanks. You can go to the London Taxi Radio. You can go. You can go to the website London Taxi Radio. Co. You can get hold of me, Sean at London Taxi Radio <laughs> at gmail.com you can look us up on Facebook and on Twitter at London Taxi Radio that's all for now thanks to the people of City Diesel yeah? podcast City next Diesel. week next City, month, Diesel. City, City Diesel City Diesel I'm coming to it I'm coming to it come on, coming come to on. It. Come on. Come on. Come on. oh look at him we've got a podcast next week and the week after but we'll be back here at City Diesel this is at oh, GSS wait. tonight there's been uh, if you'd spend £10 there's been 5 pence per litre off the advertising price, and that I'm sure we'll be the next time. But you've got to come on down, you've got to get involved to get that deal, haven't you? That's at City Diesel at GSS. So, as Mick the Brick would say, get involved and we'll be seeing you. But whatever happens, you've got to stand by me, haven't you? Uh, so okay. 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 <laughs> and here we go. And that's the end of today's uh, taxi the relaunch. And thanks to everyone at City Diesel as well. See you next time. My pleasure, my pleasure. It was great.